What's up, fam? It's your boy, Kirk Nugent, and we are going to take a look today at everything I do to set up for virtual speaking engagements. Uh, virtual speaking is one of the ways that you can use live video to really extend your brand, uh, to really establish yourself as a thought leader in a specific space. And being able to show up in those virtual spaces and really knock people's socks off is a tool in your toolbox that you want to be able to pull out from time to time. So if you want to figure out all those things, stick with us and let's figure out how it all works. I'm Kirk Nugent and I teach small businesses, entrepreneurs, and faith-based entities how to simplify live video mechanics so they can shine a floodlight on their brand. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at everything that I do to do my virtual speaking engagements. I start off with my notes. Let's take a look at that right now. So I put together my notes, I put together my thoughts. I know this is not technical, this is not live video related, but I put them together. I put them together because it helps me in setting up the presentation, which is what we're gonna do next in Canva. But I put them together, put them on, pay, on paper. Sometimes I'm very verbose. Um, as you can see, this is 2,292 words here. Um, and, and sometimes I'm really just putting together an outline because I know exactly what I need to write on paper to be able to recall a, a specific story that I want to share or a, a make a specific point. So I just put down, you know, the breadcrumbs that will allow me to get to my home base. But I treat my public speaking the same way I treat my live streams. Like just like you have a run sheet, I have basically an outline for my speaking for the topic that I'm going to be speaking on and for the entire presentation. I want to take, as I've said before, your run sheet is your GPS for your live show. Well, my outline for my speaking is my GPS and it allows me to navigate the entire audience to a desired destination. So that's, that's what I do first. And, and the reason why I'm showing this is because you got to know what you want to you know put on the screen like what graphics what what do you want people to see what do you want them to walk away with most of the time i try to be not you know not to put too much text on the screen <laughs> this is this is an old presenter's uh uh rule that i'm i generally follow but sometimes there's a quote or specific quotes sometimes there's something especially in these virtual spaces that you want people to take pictures of, questions that you want to really drive home, specific thoughts that you want on screen so that they can still read it over and over, even as you're driving that point home with a specific story or something else. So I start with my notes and then I move to the design of the presentation and I've moved all my presentation design into Canva. Let's look at that. So this particular presentation is called The Paradox of Purpose, and I, I did it for uh, the Wakanda SDA Fellowship. It was a couple of Friday nights ago. Whenever you're watching this video, it would not be a couple of Friday nights ago. But the point being, um, I try to, of course, mimic their brand, um, if you will. I find that having a little bit of a touch, uh, maybe the logo from the organization I'm speaking for, goes a very long way in, in, in kind of displaying like, okay, this, this person is, you know, a part of the team. Uh, and, and, and as a public speaker, you want your, your event organize, organizers to recognize that you're not just there to collect a check. You're not this there to get glory. You're really a part of the team. You're trying to drive home a point. And visually, I want to make sure that folks feel like this is still my space. He's just borrowing it for a specific time to drive home a specific point. And so this is what I've done with the design. You can see that, that I've used their logo here. Um, I've, I've put the name of the entity across the back. Like, so I have it in the background. Um, I, I made sure to grab the colors from the logo to design that there. And then I just put the title, my title here. Now, some of you are looking at this scene and you're wondering, why is it one-sided? Well, my video is going to go right here, right where right in this empty space that you're seeing, and you're gonna see that same empty space in all of them. So here are some of the questions I'm gonna put on the screen. What is purpose? Here's a personal quote of mine. What can I do to discover my purpose? 
um, mission statement. And, and if I'll, I'll put the link to the video uh, where I made this presentation in in the description so you can see that. But, you know, here here is one. God is inviting all of us to find purpose where our lives and calling to Christ intersect. I wanted that in big, bold letters. I wanted myself to be, you know, my video to be on the other side in a smaller view. But the idea is this is this is the design in the entire presentation. And what I do, so two different things here that you want that I want to make note of. One is I used to actually come through here, click on download, leave it, leave them as PNG and then download the entire thing. So it would zip up all the files and it would download it and I would extract that and I would just put them into Ecamm scene by scene. So here there are 10 slides, so I'd have 10 scenes. And for the most part, that was easy. But I have learned that I was even as easy as that was, I was literally doing it the wrong way. So what I do now, I come here to download. I change this to PDF and then I download everything except for the, the last two scenes, which um, I'm, will make sense in a second. Um, and that gives me my 11 slides. The 11th slide is a question slide and I have the entire PDF and I would click download. So that is what you would do. Design your presentation in Canva. You can use the free version. You can use the paid version. It just gives you a little more options, um, especially for your presentations, though. They've got some great templates. Just make sure that there's a space in the template on this scene or on this screen where you can place your video. So let me scroll down here to the bottom. You're seeing that this screen here is a transparent overlay. I'm going to show that to you in a second. All I've got is my signature here. Kirk Newton speaks and the little world there. So I put this on the full screen picture of me whenever I'm presenting. Uh, when I come back to a full screen, this is what is on the screen. I wanna make sure that they can visibly see like, oh, uh, this is how I find this guy. This is how I follow this guy. Then here, what I've done is just create a little bit of an outline and a frame, um, which I will then take take the green part off of it in using Finder and use that uh, to put my video on top of the PDF. So let's take a look at Ecamm where I've had some of this stuff set up right now. So we're here in Ecamm and I've got preview mode on so I will stay in this bottom box and you will we'll see the changes happen up here. Here you're seeing on the screen, um, I'm gonna just turn off uh, this PNG here, you'll see that that goes away as soon as I turn that off. So that is the overlay. So you can see I'm taking that off and on, but this is how I would normally start things out. And so I'm gonna give you an example of what we did, what I did in the old way, right? So here's one of the screens. You can see, you know, I've still got Canva up over here. Um, I can put my, 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 my notes on there, but this is how I did for one of the presentations for Allegheny East Conference. I put their logo here on the bottom of the Mac. And then um, you can see here, scene by scene. Here, you know, technology is not the main point. I'm not a techie. So these are these are some. This was these were the things that I was sharing in that presentation, um, and and th they allowed me to expound on it um, and, and and share a little bit more information relevant to the to the audience. But you can see that I'm actually having to go scene by scene, and you I, I use my my uh, my my my. Stream Deck to be able to, to 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 transition from one scene to the next. So it wasn't hard to do, but it's just that it created a lot of scenes, um, and and that wasn't necessarily the best way to do that. But here you're seeing where it says presentation, and then presentation two. Um, here these are actually PDFs, and you can see that we're at page two of ten. And what I learned is if I put this on the presentation this way. I can move through my presentation, even using the stream deck. Uh, you can you can actually set your stream deck to do. Let me see if I can pull this up here. Configure stream deck, and so you're seeing right here on the screen these two buttons here, which I've added from um, from the Ecamm menu in the stream deck. You're seeing that on the screen here where it says previous PDF here and next PDF. I've just dragged those two here and I've got these two um, on my on my stream deck already ready for my PDF. So now I don't I can just create one scene and then just toggle through the PDF as opposed to 
doing multiple scenes for every slide. So I was doing it the wrong way. And I'm going to get into some of those details in just a second here. I'm going to go back up to the, where are we here? Presentation. Here we are. So this was, this is the, the presentation that I downloaded. And you can see here in the overlays window, purpose presentation dot PDF. If I, so if I hide that, you'll see that this is what's on the screen. If I hide the frame, you'll see that it's literally just my video. So if I unlock this, this is all that's here on the frame. All right. And so that's what's on the, on this, on this scene is a frame. So you start the, you start the scene by putting your PDF on the screen. So uh, we put the PDF on the screen. So here's the PDF and make sure that your stream deck is working so I can toggle through the PDF. Um, I always lock the PDF once I have it to the right size. The next thing that I did was add my video to the screen. There it is. So my, now my video is on the screen. And then the next thing I did was to add the frame, the frame that you saw to the screen. I add that there and you see that that, you know, again, on brand with the colors that the uh, client use for their for their logo. I use that same red to frame out my video. And and then so now I'm in the scene this way and I can toggle through my presentation and it is seamless it is seamless i had several people reach out to me saying hey 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 hold on what are you doing how are you doing this this is so cool the last thing that i want to show you however is how do you get your sound in so this is ecam and we're using the virtual camera of course here we are we go up to output um sorry output here we go virtual cam my virtual camera is on and anytime you're on your screen and you see this uh, camera here, you can know that this virtual camera is on. And so all I would need to do in any one of these applications is to select that uh, so that I'm going into the application with Ecamm virtual camera. And I'll show that to you in a second. But first, let's take a look at how I get my sound in using Loopback. The first thing you want to do, however, is to set your output from Ecamm so audio monitor, set it to the microphone you create in loopback. So this is the microphone that I've created in loopback. It's called Ecamm Out. This is what you would need to set, set up. And we're going to look at that right now. So here we are in loopback, and I've got a couple of microphones in here already set up. But you can see that Ecamm Out is essentially just a pass-through microphone. There are no other sources in this mic. And what that pass-through does is it takes the audio that it's receiving and it sends it on to whoever's on the other side. It literally sits as a man in the middle. So you can actually set this up as a destination, as a set of speakers, if you will, if that helps you. Um, you can go into an application and say, hey, where do you want to hear this? Where do you want this output to be? You send it to this particular appliance, the virtual appliance, in my case, I've named it Ecamm Out. And then from there, I can actually go into my other applications. Let's say I'm doing a presentation in Zoom or Microsoft Teams or in StreamYard, like live streaming somewhere. I can then select my microphone in that platform to be Ecamm Out as well. So both the destination from Ecamm and the source for wherever you're presenting would need to be Ecamm out. So just real quick, let's go back to Ecamm to look at that setting. So now we go here to output, go to audio monitor, and I'm setting it to Ecamm out. So here we are back in my desktop looking at Google Chrome and we are looking at StreamYard. I have turned off the camera because I don't want that infinity effect to happen. But if I click on cam mic here, I can select Ecamm Live Virtual Camera as my camera. And that will take my entire presentation, everything you're seeing on screen right now or what we set up prior and take that into the destination where I'm presenting. But we want to make sure that our audio is set right. And so in order to do that, I've got Ecamm out virtual. And so that is what my audio is set to. And that is what the audio is coming out of Ecamm and into this system. So you set it as the microphone in your destination. 
but you set it as your speakers or your your destination or your source um, for Ecamm itself. I hope that's clear. Let me know if it, in the comments if it's not, so I can run through that thing again. I've got a couple other videos where I go over that in greater detail, but this is the process and it works great. So there you have it. Um, we, we looked at my notes. We looked at the design of the presentation in Canva. Um, we looked in Ecamm of how to stack the one scene for the presentation, right? The most efficient way. And to be clear, if you don't have a stream deck to be able to advance from one page to the other for your PDF, you can use the keyboard. The arrows on your keyboard will work just as, just as well. You just gotta make sure that your, your mouse is clicked in on Ecamm to be able to advance to the next page. It works. I, I, I didn't always have a stream deck, but if you do have a stream deck, I did show you that that PDF next PDF last, previous, next, those are all there as options under the Ecamm set of options in your Stream Deck software. So just program your Stream Deck to have those on there, and then you don't have to worry about where your mouse is or what the keyboard is doing. You can just advance that slide with the button on your Stream Deck. Then we went and looked at how do you put this into some of these other platforms. Now I showed it in StreamYard, but the same thing would be true of Zoom, the same thing would be true of Teams, the same thing would be true of any other application, virtual applications, meeting space that you're gonna go into to make your presentations. And that's it. Um, the, the things that I did not talk about is, you know, how to present on camera, um, making sure that your presentation has things in it that are visual markers and cues for you. Uh, to you as the speaker. Uh, it, it, it's, it's something that is representative for your audience, but you've got to have things in your presentation that trigger something in your mind that allows you to bring up things that you know you want to include in your presentation. Ver live video strategy has to include public speaking, has to include uh, working with different groups as a thought leader, as an authority figure in a space. Whatever, whatever experts, you see, whatever you're using live video to do, that's just the mechanism. This is just the tool, right? Your voice, your message, your expertise, that is not up for question. What we're showing you on this channel, how it all works is how we can utilize these tools, utilize these spaces, these platforms to best put your message out there and to create a community around your specific flavor of expertise. And I'm hoping that that's clear. I'm hoping that you got some value from this video. Even if you're not a public speaker, even if you just wanna go live by yourself and share a specific presentation, a specific thought, walk people methodically through a process and allow them to have that aha moment in the midst of your presentation. This is one of the ways you can do that using Ecamm to visually knock their socks off and have a much more engaging experience for everybody involved, including you. Well, that's it. I said a whole mouthful there. Uh, it's your boy, Kirk Nugent, the Geek Speaker Preacher, hoping that somewhere in the video today, we got you a little closer to figuring out how it all works. If you haven't already, we'd hope that you'd subscribe. Mondays, 7 p.m., Convos and Collabs. Wednesdays, 12.30 p.m., the Midweek Huddle. Fridays, Virtual Cafe, sometimes 10, sometimes a little later, and it goes long, but always packed with value. Listen. So excited that you're here. So excited that you're with us for the long haul. And we will see you in the next video.